Want to learn to make more offers? Shout yes. yes. How many of you want to learn how to make those offers infinitely more effectively? Say, I do. I do. Excellent. Give yourselves a hand for being in the right place at the right time today. What if I gave you the master key to success in life? Would that be valuable? Everybody say yes. yes. So I want you to understand first, how many of you have never seen me before? Wow, I thought I was way more famous than that. Okay, I got to get out more. Um, so, so one of the things that you're going to notice about me is that I am not a lecturer. I'm not a what? Lecturer. Talk to me, everybody. I'm not a what? Lecturer. I am not a lecturer. Um, I practice a concept called natural learning. What kind of learning? Natural. natural learning. And natural learning is more like playing than it is like going to school. Like going to school was kind of painful for me, right? Sitting there listening to somebody give a monologue about something. I don't know, remember what it was. But anyway, um, natural learning is what it means is I'm going to ask a lot of questions. I'm going to ask a lot of what? Questions. Everybody, I'm going to ask a lot of what? Questions. I'm going to ask a lot of questions, and it is your job to give me an answer. See, I already know this stuff. It, it, it's scientifically proven that you will only remember about 5% of what you hear. If you take notes and write something down, you can increase it to about 20 to 25%. But there is a secret that if you will do this one thing, you can increase your retention by up to as much as 85%. How y'all like to know what that is? Say, I would. I would. Excellent. And that is by actually saying it. Words are the most powerful force in the entire universe. Hence, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Words. It's really an interesting concept. Words are powerful. Stephen is This whole event, you don't get it, but this whole event is about teaching you how to use words more effectively. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes? Yes. And so the reason I'm having you talk to me is because when I say it, you might hear it. But when you say it, you have to hear it. And I don't want you to miss it. How many of y'all got it? Say, I got it. I got it. So I ask a lot of questions. And if I make a statement, I will get you to repeat it. I will get you to do what? Repeat. Everybody do what? Repeat. repeat it. And every now and then, I'll begin a sentence, leave the last word off, and get you to fill in the blank. blank. So now that we understand how we're going to learn, because you're not going to watch me work, we're going to work together. Everybody okay with that? Say, I'm okay. I'm okay. So what we're going to do is I am going to help you Tap into your superpower. As a human being, every one of us have a superpower that can unlock all of the opportunities available to us in our lives. How many of y'all like the sound of that music? Say yes. yes. And so the superpower that I'm talking about is the superpower of expectation. And some of you are probably old enough to remember a television show that used to come on in the 80s called The Greatest American Hero. Okay, we got some Greatest American Hero fans in here. Okay, so, so The Greatest American Hero is this guy who was just a regular guy. I think he was a school teacher, I'm not sure, but he was just a regular guy. And they, these aliens came and they left this suit, this superhero suit. And he found it. And he put it on it, gave him the ability to fly, it gave him superhuman human strength, but he lost the instructions. <laughs> and so he had these superpowers, but he didn't know how to use them. And so, you know, he'd be trying to save the day and he'd be flying and every time he'd try to land, he'd come crashing through a wall or something, right? And so if you have a superpower, and you don't know how to use it, then you're going to end up like the greatest American hero. You may know how to take off, but you're not going to land very well. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes? Yes. And so my job is to teach you how to tap into and access your superpower. Whose superpower? Everybody type yourself in the chest say, my superpower. My superpower. Your superpower. And your greatest superpower is expectation. It's, it's, it's like it's so much more powerful than you believe. And I'm going to tell you something. Most people believe more in their doubts than they do in their beliefs. In fact, most people believe their doubts and doubt their beliefs. <laughs> and what you've got to learn to do is you've got to learn how to believe your beliefs and doubt your doubts. But see, what's really, what's really tragic is we go through the um, miseducational, misdirectional system also known as government indoctrination camps. Um, and they tell us what to think. But nobody teaches us how to think. Because when you learn how to think, no one can stop you. Okay, we got a bunch of capitalist pigs. I get it, I get it. Oink, 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 okay. 
Okay. I'm like, no, that's cool. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. If that's what y'all got to do, hey, to help you get it, oink, oink, okay? Let's go. But my job while I'm here today is to help you understand how belief works so that you can get better at offering your offers. See, what would you attempt if you knew you could not fail? Right, you, well, you would probably attempt to get some markers. Okay, I got them. Um, so, if you knew you could not fail, how many of you, being honest, if you knew the next thing you were going to work on was going to work and you knew it 100% without any doubt at all, how much of your effort, time, energy, and money would you put into it? All of it. All of it. Isn't that interesting? So if that's really, if, if you're being honest now, if what you just told me is truth and not lie, then the real reason you've not succeeded is because you don't believe what you're working on is going to work. That's the real reason. I'm not, by the way, I ain't fussing at y'all. I mean, I know I look like a grandpa and all that, but I ain't fussing at you. I'm just helping you understand. See what I'm saying? Like, you're, the thing that's holding you back is your beliefs. See, because your beliefs create your life. I'm going to write a word up here, and I want you to tell me what the word is. What's that word, everybody? Believing. What's that word, everybody? Believing. Believing. Okay. How about this word? I don't have to hold all these at the same time. My hands are big, but they ain't that big. Okay. What's that word? Believing. What's that word, everybody? Believing. Believing. Okay. 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 Calm down. No, you don't have to calm down. I've got a new word for you. What's that word? Believing. All right, so let's read, let's read these three words together. Believing, believing, believing. By the way, I'm going to teach you something about creating wealth. Everything is energy. Everything's what? Energy. Everything is energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes form. Now, that's a physics principle. May I give you another physics principle? Yes. No high energy result will ever flow to a low energy source. Yes. Which means... And by the way, wealth is a high energy result, which means unless you bring all the energy you've got to everything you do, you have no hope whatsoever of creating wealth. So what you've got to do is you've got to become, you've got to what? What's the word I just used? Become a high energy source. Repeat, raise your right hand, repeat after me. I will, I will for, the rest of my life, for the rest of my life, be a high energy source. Be a high energy source. Give yourselves a hand for being here today. So now, let's read these three words with high energy. Everybody ready? Go. Believing, believing, believing. One more time. Believing, believing, believing. Now, I know you think those are all the same word, but they're not. Here's what I want you to understand. I want you to understand that you will be living what you're believing, even though you be lying. You will be living what you're believing, even though you be lying. By the way, um, if there's a camera that can put that on the screen so people over on the sides can see it, you will be living what you're believing even though you be lying. What does that mean? Here's what it means. It means anything you tell yourself about a future outcome, you made it up. Did y'all pick up what I just put down? Or did I put it down too fast? One more time. Anything, and write it in first person, anything I tell myself about a future outcome, I made it up. See, when we leave here, we're all going to say, well, I'm going home. What we really mean is we intend to go home. But the reality is, do we, do we know for sure we're going to make it home? No, but do we really believe we're going to make it home? Yes, because if we didn't, we wouldn't leave. We'd stay here. How many of y'all picking up what I'm putting down? And so what happens is we, we, we kid ourselves and we play games in our own mind. And we don't even realize we're psyching ourselves out. We tell ourselves we're going to do things that we know we have no intention of doing because we already believe it's not going to work. And so we sabotage our success. And as Agamandino said, the path is smooth. Why do you throw rocks before you? And the reason you throw rocks before you is because that's what you've been programmed to do. And the reason Stephen put this great event together and so that he, along with the other speakers, so that we could change your beliefs. And primarily, your beliefs about time. Beliefs about what? Time. time. It blows my mind. 
You teach people how to get rich and they say, I don't have time. You're so busy being broke, you don't have time to get rich. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, how did you make it past the fifth grade? Are y'all picking up one? Like, I'm too busy to get rich. What does that mean? Right? You have some erroneous beliefs about time that are costing you a fortune. You have some erroneous beliefs about money that are costing you a fortune. You have a, some erroneous beliefs about debt that are costing you a fortune. You have some erroneous beliefs about wealth that are costing you a fortune. And they're costing you a fortune. Because people go, time is? Okay, now that, let that be the last time you ever say that in your life. Because time is not money. Time is infinitely more valuable than money. And you already know it even though you've been saying time is money. And see, the reason the cultural hypnotic societal mechanism programmed you to believe that time is money is so that you would be willing to sell, what's the word it's used? Sell. A whole bunch of your time for a little bit of somebody else's money. In fact, some of you, when you stepped out of the arena of employment and into the arena of entrepreneurship, one of the reasons you have a hard time making money is because you don't want to raise your prices. And the reason you resist raising your prices is because you believe that if you raise your prices, you're making too much money in too little time, and your internal, your internal resistance to that won't allow you to raise your prices. Because you believe the amount of time that you... So, so what do they get? Well, they get six hours of my time. You don't make enough money to buy my time. <laughs> At the end of your life, do you, you realize... If I said to you, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write somebody in here a $100,000 check, who'd like it? Okay, there's one stipulation. You have to end your life today. Now who wants it? Nobody. Why? You just proved to yourself that that time is more valuable than money. Somebody say, aha. But if you knew you were going to die, and there was a cure, and you had $100,000 in your retirement, and the cure costs $100,000, and it worked 100% of the time, how many of you would take your last $100,000 and buy back the rest of your life? Raise your hand and say me. Me. Okay, that shows that on a, on a cognitive level, you get it. Now, what you've got to do is you've got to discipline your emotions to let your mind be in control instead of letting your emotions be in control. And, 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 and there's really only one way to do that. So <laughs> what you have to do is you have to understand, you have to understand what's stopping you. So I'm going to show you how you can develop better control over your own mind and how you can offer your offers in such a way that more people buy them. How many of y'all like the sound of that music? Say yes. yes. Okay. So I'm going, to, I'm, going to give, I'm, going to, I'm going to give you like the holy grail of selling. Okay. So you know, you, you've heard people say, people love to buy, but they hate to be sold. How many of y'all heard that? Okay. That's, that's baloney. You know, the person who made that up didn't know how to sell. Because I'm going to tell you something. You want to know the truth about it? Here's the reality. People love to buy, and they love to be sold. People love to buy, and they love to be sold, but they hate to be convinced. And if you resort to convincing, the reason you resorted to convincing was because you did not do a good job selling. Selling is not convincing. Selling is persuading. And since I'm defining words, I might as well define these words. Convincing is when I attempt to get somebody to do something I want them to do for my reasons. That's convincing. And by the way, people can feel it when you're trying to get them to do something for your reasons. Can they not feel it? Yes? yes. And that's the feeling people hate. People say, I just hate the feeling of being salesy. No, you hate the feeling of being convincing. You don't hate the feeling of being salesy. The reason you're convincing people is because you didn't sell them. So convincing is attempting to get people to make a decision you desire them to make for your reasons. Do you know what selling and persuasion is? Persuasion is helping people make a decision they already desire to make for their own reasons. The reality is, the reality is all of you already get this, but you've never paid attention to it. And so what you've got to do is you must learn to master the art and science of selling. How many of you got it? Say, I got it. I got it. So, so I'm going to show you. So for those of you who've never seen me before, I'm going to say this. 
I talk about the Bible a lot because that's where I got all my success principles from because they're not mine. And, and, and by, I'm not even saying that so you can clap. Like, if you agree, great. If you don't agree, I'm cool with that too. Um, I'm telling you that because I want you to know that like, I don't have the corner on the market on these principles. Every principle that I show you today, every principle I'm going to show you today, I'm just telling you where I got it from. In case I'm not around and you need a principle, you know where to go. Okay? <laughs> so, this is you. This is who? Everybody say me. me. And so, over here, you have this, this fact. We're going to call it a fact, right? And so, this fact could be a situation, it could be a circumstance, it could be an incident, it could be whatever. And so... You, you see that fact. <laughs> and then when you see that fact, you assign a value to it. You, you assume it means something. And you give it context. And you focus on it. So you're, the fact is not what's important. I'm rich. I'm broke. I've got a job. I don't have a job. I have money. I don't have money. None of that matters. Here's what matters. Your focus what your focus tells you about that fact is what matters. And focus creates a frame. So when a fact enters into your head, that fact, you build a frame around it, and that frame is going to either cause you to, ha it's gonna cause you to have this thing called belief. What's it called? Belief. Everybody, what's it called? Belief. belief. And I want you to understand, your beliefs create your life. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Say yes. yes. Okay. So belief, what people don't realize about belief is this. They don't realize that faith and doubt are both belief. Did y'all pick up what I just put down? Yes. See, belief is a two-sided coin. Heads, it's faith. Tails, doubt. But they're both belief. Doubt is belief in the outcomes I don't desire. Faith is belief in the outcomes I do desire. And so, once this belief lands, I put a frame around it. The frame that I put around it is going to determine whether that belief is either faith or doubt. Doubt. So, when I get this feel, so I've got this, I've got this fact that I focus on that creates belief in my head. And here's what's really interesting. Here's, the, here's, the, here's, how, here's how to sell things to people. Here's how to get yourself to move when you're like, uh, but what if it doesn't work? Okay, so here's what you do. You understand that there's only one thing that moves people. People do what they do for one reason. How many reasons? One. one reason. For one reason and one reason only. By the way, where's Jennifer Neal? Jennifer, where are you? Jennifer in here? Oh, you're over there. Okay. My son has something he wants to give to you. Okay, cool. Thank you. So, no, she's, he's, I mean, he's going to, did you get my message on Facebook? Okay, I sent you a message on Facebook. Anyway, cool. So, Oh, by the way, if y'all want to Instagram anything I'm saying, if something really hits you like that, Instagram it, tag me in it, and I'll reshare it on my Instagram thingy, whatchamadoogle. <laughs> okay, faith and doubt are both belief. And there's only one reason people ever do anything. There's one reason people buy. There's one reason people don't buy. There's one, people, there's one reason people get into a start a business and they make it succeed. There's one reason people start a business and they don't make it succeed. Everything that everybody does, they do for one reason. Would you all like to know what that reason is? Shout, yes! yes! Because they feel like it. <laughs> People do what they do because they feel like it. People don't do what they don't do because they don't feel like it. So Say, Myron, it can't be that simple. Okay, now if you want something complicated, you're going to have to find somebody else, baby. Because the truth is always simple. It's lies that are complicated. And I'm telling you, when people buy from you, they buy from you for one reason, because they feel like buying from you. Now, there may be some things that go there, and there are some things that go into helping them feel like it, but they buy from you because they feel like it. When they don't buy from you, they buy from you because they don't feel like it. When you take action in the direction of your dreams, you do it because you feel like it. When you don't take action in the direction of your dreams, you do it because you don't feel like it. And see, this fact that manifests as a focus in our head as belief does not stay in our head. F faith, belief is a traveling salesman. Belief is a what? Traveling salesman. And the belief that we have in our head 
always comes down and manifests that this, this focus moves down and it manifests itself in our heart as a feeling or an emotion. And this feeling, when I get this feeling, it's either going to empower me to move or it's going to disempower me from moving. That's it. See, I don't have to, I don't have to use willpower to make myself exercise. I have to use willpower to make myself feel like exercising. And there's a difference. Because when I feel like exercise, I'm going to exercise. When I feel like eating the chocolate cake, though, I'm going to eat the chocolate cake. <laughs> and so the question is, how do I get myself to feel like doing the things that are in my best interest? And how do I get myself not to feel like doing the things that are not in my best interest? Does that make sense to everyone? Yes? yes. So this feeling, when it manifests in our heart, if, it land, if faith is the b- belief that migrates, it migrates down here and it manifests itself as anticipation. Anticipation is a feeling that empowers action. Anticipation is a feeling that infuses energy. Can you remember when you were a little child on Christmas Eve and you knew what you were getting the next day? What was the hardest thing in the world to do? Go to sleep. Why? Because your expectation and the anticipation of that next day and what you were getting charged you up so much you couldn't sleep. How many of you have ever gotten a business idea, you start working on it, and next thing you know, 13 hours have gone by, like, where'd the time go? You got infused by that idea and your anticipation of this thing working. Do you realize writers never have writer's block? You say, what's writer's block, Myron? Writer's block is belief that the book is not going to sell. People say, how many of y'all know somebody has a, has a uh, procrastination problem? Okay, I've got news for you. I'm going to set you free from that belief. How many of you, the person is you, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> nobody has a procrastination problem. Procrastination is always the symptom of a problem. It is never the problem. Say procrastination is a symptom of a problem? Yeah, procrastination is a symptom of a problem. What's the problem that procrastination is a, feeling, is, is a symptom of? When you have doubt, that belief manifests as a feeling in your heart of anxiety. And when you have the feeling of anxiety, anxiety is paralyzing. Anxiety is the thief of your dream. dreams. Everything in your life that you desire, that you've been working towards, that you don't have right now, the reason you don't have it is because of anxiety. People say, but I have a fear of failure. You don't have a fear of failure. You have anxiety over failure, and they're not the same thing. They feel similar, but they're not the same. Say, Myron, okay, so why do you say anxiety and fear are not the same? The reason I say anxiety and fear are not the same is because fear is caution over a real and present danger. Did I say that too fast? Fear is caution over a real, over a what? Real Real and present. What? Danger. That's what fear is. Anxiety is caution over a future imagined danger. Anxiety is caution over a future imagined danger. So you're so worried about the webinar not working that you don't ever launch the webinar. And so you worrying about it, not working, makes it not work because you won't work on it. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, baby. And so what you've got to learn how to do is you must learn how to overcome anxiety. Anxiety is the thief of your dreams. And anxiety is a result of asking the wrong questions. And the main wrong question that people ask that keeps them stuck like Chuck in a pickup truck is what if it doesn't work? Here's what you don't understand. Ask and you shall receive. So if you ask the wrong question, guess what you're going to receive? The wrong answer. Oh, snap. And what you've got to do is you've got to get victory over anxiety in your life. What's anxiety look like? It looks like me getting in my Bentley in my driveway, 12-cylinder engine, 700-plus horsepower, tank full of gas, vroom, vroom, won't put it in drive, and I vroom, 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 vroom. What can happen when I rev up my engine in the driveway? Two things. 
I can either burn up the engine or run out of gas. And that's the same thing that happens in entrepreneurs' lives. They're wasting all this energy, revving up their emotion. Oh, but what if it doesn't work? Oh, oh, but I don't know. And I don't know how to do this. And I don't know how to do that. I think I'm just going to go get me a job. And there's not anything wrong with having a job. But I'm just showing you why the stuff you're working on isn't working. Because you're fighting yourself. It doesn't make sense to desire one thing and believe in the opposite. And so you have anxiety. And anxiety, this feeling in your heart, these feelings are also traveling salesmen. And so they manifest as a function in your hand. By the way, let me give you, a, let me give you a, another definition for anxiety. Anxiety is wasting present energy on a future outcome that is undesirable to me. Wasting present energy on a future outcome that's undesirable to me. Have you, how many of you have ever heard the saying, worrying about something makes it happen? The reason worrying about it makes it happen is because worrying about it robs you of the energy to do the thing that makes it not happen. Anxiety is wasting present energy on a future outcome that's undesirable to me. Anticipation is gaining present energy from a future outcome that is desirable to me. So I borrow energy. I don't even borrow it. I just grab some energy from the future. And when I grab some energy from the future and I, 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 I use that energy from the future to take action in the present that makes that future thing manifest. And so instead of asking what if it doesn't work, I ask myself a better question. How awesome is this going to be when it works? How amazing is my life going to be when this works? How awesome is it going to be when my funnel is making me $100,000 a month or $100,000 a day for that matter? How awesome is it going to be when I build this business? It's going to be great. But we don't ask ourselves empowering questions and we wonder why we go through life with disempowering answers. People say, Myron, are you worried about the hurricane? Not in the slightest. Are you ready for the hurricane? Sure. Whatever that means. Like, people somehow think that getting themselves all revved up about this future event that's supposed to be happening. I'm not saying the hurricane's not real. The hurricane's obviously real, right? The hurricane's gonna hit Florida. So how much of the wind and water can I stop by worrying about it? Exactly how much? None. Oh, none. So what am I gonna do that for? It's a waste. Why not put my energy in something that's going to make my life better and give me the ability to make other people's lives better? So, you've got to learn how to master your beliefs. So, um, I wanna show you something. Do you understand? I don't know which pocket I put that in. Oh, it's in my hand. Okay. So, I have in this hand a $100 bill. I have in this hand a penny. This is a penny. This is a $100 bill. This is a what? Penny. Everybody, this is a what? Penny. And this is a? $100 bill. I'm going to ask you a question. It is not a trick 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 question. Nothing up my sleeve. Okay. So, which one's worth more, the penny or the $100 bill? $100 bill. Who said the penny? Okay. Okay. So, invariably, sometimes people will say the penny. Why? Because we've been programmed by the miseducational misdirectional system to believe that if an answer is too obvious, it must be the opposite. No, I'm serious. We have been programmed to ignore easy, obvious answers and to only accept and look for difficult, hard answers. So if I ask which one's worth more, the penny or the $100 bill, since it's such a simple question, you assume that I am being like your teachers were and I'm trying to trick you. I'm not trying to trick you. I said three times before I said it, it is not a trick question. So let me ask you the question a different way. Let me ask you, and I'm not, by the way, I'm not making fun of the people who said the penny. That's not, that's not the point. Because you just did what your programming told you to do and none of us will ever behave consistently in a way that's inconsistent with our programming. Did you hear, hear what I said? None of us will ever behave consistently in a way that's inconsistent with our programming. So you're not doing the, th I'm just doing this because I believe it's right. No, you're doing it because you've been programmed to do it. I'll prove that to you later if I have time. So if I were to ask you, which one would you rather have, the penny or the $100 bill, what would you say? <laughs> then that's the one that's worth the most. 
Does that make sense? Okay, now, we're gonna say that this penny represents my lack, L-A-C-K, my lack. This $100 bill represents my fortune. My what? Fortune. My fortune, this represents my lack. Now, not only is this, this $100 bill is worth 10,000 times as much as this penny. It takes 10,000 of these to make one of these. By the way, you, would you like to know the other reason people, some people said that the penny's worth more? Because you thought, well, the material that the penny's made out of is worth more than the material the $100 bill's made out of. And you're absolutely correct. And just that understanding right there proves that the essence of money is not material. The essence of money is spiritual. I wish I had time to teach that to you, but the essence of money, the significance of money, the power of money, the value of money is not materialistic at all. People say, I don't want to be rich, I'm not that, mat not that materialistic. Well, which is it? You don't want to be rich or you're not that materialistic. Because money is not material in its essence. Any more than a human being is material in our essence. Anyway. <laughs> so this is 10,000 times worth 10,000 times as much. It's probably 44 and a half times larger than the penny. So if I hold the $100 bill in front of me and I hold the penny in front of me, I can hide the penny behind the $100 bill. See, I can, I can see the 100 but I can't see the penny. Does it seem possible? Even if I turn, I can still see the $100 bill. I still see it. If I hold both of them in front of me and I don't cover this up with my hand and I don't ball it up, if I hold both of these opened in front of me, does it seem possible that I could hide the $100 bill behind the penny, yes or no? No, it doesn't seem possible, does it? Everybody say, unless. Unless my fortune is far enough away and my lack is close enough to my eye. And when my lack is close enough to my eye, not only can I not see my fortune, by the way, which is within arm's reach, I can't see most of the people in this room. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to do what Stephen and I and Russell and, and all the speakers and Brad and all the speakers and Dana and all of us are attempting to do for you. I want you to help me get my fortune. So say, Myron, get your fortune. What fortune? Say the one that's right in front of you. There's no fortune in front of me. Say, yes, there is. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. But I can't see it. Say, move the penny. What penny? And here's why I say what penny. Because when a penny is that close to my eye, I can't tell it's a penny. It doesn't look like a penny. When my lack is that close to my eye, it doesn't look like my lack. You know what it looks like? It looks like just the way things are. And so many of us stay stuck our whole lives because we let things that we lack that are as insignificant as a penny keep us from our destiny. If you've never seen me speak anywhere before, you, like you didn't even know there was such a thing as a Myron Golden. <laughs> if you, I want you to stand up. If you've never seen me before, just stand up. Okay, just the people who've never seen me before. Wow, really? No, period. Just, you've never seen me online. You've never seen me live. You've never seen me online. You've okay, so I, I want one, two, three, four, five, six volunteers of the people who are standing who've never seen me before come up and join me on stage. First six. Helps to have long legs, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Okay, one, two. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, we're, we're here. Okay, so we got six. Okay, we got more than six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Okay, um, let me see. Uh, I'm gonna keep, we got three ladies up here. I'm gonna, two ladies, three ladies. We got three ladies. I'm gonna keep three ladies and three guys. So if three of you guys don't mind volunteering, not to volunteer, that would be helpful. Ooh. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay, is that one, two, three, four, five, six? six. All right. I'm, I'm so confused. Oh boy. One, two, three. Okay, you're good. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Okay, so I want y'all to back up a little bit. Back up a little bit. So, so what I'm gonna do. So <laughs> I've been teaching now, believe it or not, I've been teaching for like 35 minutes. It's hard to believe for me to believe. Um, um, so I'm going to give these people a test because they've never heard me teach before to see if I'm doing a good job. So I'm going to ask you all a series of questions. They go from easy to hard and no two people can give the same answer. And so if you give the answer, then you can't give it. If you give it, you can't. Make sense? And, um, and you don't have a lifeline. No lifeline. So if, if, if you don't know, and you know, hush. <laughs> Do not help these people. I don't care if it's your husband, your wife, your daughter, your son, your mama, your... 
Okay, we're on the same page. What is your name? Mirlandra. Mirlandra, good to meet you. And? Rebecca. Rebecca, I met you yesterday. JR. JR has long legs. He was the first one on stage. Neil. Neil, good to meet you. Sarah. Sarah? Marvin. Marvin, good to meet you. Okay. Spell your name for me, Mirlaska. M I R L A N D R A. It's phonetic. It's what? Phonetic. Phonetic. And how do you say it again? Mirlandra. 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 Got it. Okay. So, I'm, so first question was easy. Y'all got, all got it right. What was your name? So that was good. <laughs> Do not help them. I ain't playing. I might look like I'm playing, but I ain't playing. Okay, so the first question is, I'm gonna start with Mirlandra. Mirlandra, what do I have in my hand? A $100 bill. A $100 bill, get it for Mirlandra, y'all. <laughs> Rebecca, what do I have in my hand? $100 bill. No, she said that. Oh, your fortune. Your fo my fortune, give it up for Rebecca, y'all. <laughs> JR, what do I have in my hand? My money. <laughs> and here I thought it was my money. Give it up for JR, y'all. Neil, what do I have in my hand? Ink on paper. Ink on paper. Give it up for Neil. Okay, Sarah, what do I have in my hand? The lifeblood of the economy. The lifeblood of the economy. Oh, you go, girl. Give it up for Sarah, y'all. And Marvin, what do I have in my hand? Energy. Energy. Give it up for Marvin, y'all. Okay, next question. How many of you believe, wow, I never saw that, that's really cool. <laughs> Was that up there the whole time? Yeah. Oh, it's pretty cool. Okay, I gotta keep going, okay. <laughs> These guys are good. Okay, so, how many of you believe that other people love to pay you? Okay, cool. So, how many of you, by the way, believe that other people love to pay you? Okay, so, I believe that other people love to pay me. I'm, can I teach you a secret to creating wealth? Yes. Learn to love to pay people. Because every thought is a seed, every deed is a seed, every dollar is a seed that I'm sowing into the garden of my future. And if I love to pay the people who serve me, the people I serve are going to love to pay me. Oh, snap. That's a formula, y'all. So how many of you really believe that other people love to pay you? Okay, so I would start, like, literally, when you have an opportunity to give somebody a tip, and you're thinking, should I give them a $5 tip or a $10 tip? Give them the $10 tip. Yeah. Right? Like, when somebody fixes your car, don't gripe about how much it costs. Like, gladly pay them and, and look at your fingernails and say, I don't have any dirt under my fingernails. This is great. Right? So, when you go, whatever. When it comes time to pay somebody, like, rejoice in the opportunity to pay somebody, and I'm telling you it will come back in spades. I love to pay people. Right? Okay. So, how many of you believe that other people love to pay you? Okay, how many of you really, really believe that other, that other people love to pay you? How many of you really, really believe, like you really believe that other people love to pay you? Now here's, remember what you talked about beliefs, right? Yeah. Right? If I tell myself that other people, if I believe that other people love to pay me, does that mean they really love to pay me? Yep. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. If I, tell if I tell myself that people don't love to pay me, is that true? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But if I'm going to make up a story about my future, I might as well make up a story that does me good instead of making up a story that does me harm. Does that make sense to everyone, yes? Yes. So I like to believe that since I'm making up a story about other people and I don't know them anyway, I might as well make up a story that serves me instead of a story that doesn't serve me. Does that make sense? Yes. So now how many of you believe that other people love to pay you? Okay, that's a good belief. I want you to own that belief for the rest of your life. How many of you are willing to do it? Say yes. yes. How many of you believe that other people love to pay you? Yes. How many of you really, really believe that other people love to pay you? I believe yes. How many of you really, really believe? Yes. Oh, JR, we got, a, we got a true believer. Yes. Give it up for JR, y'all. Okay, here's what I want you to do, JR. I want you to stand over here. Okay. I want you to stand over here. Don't go anywhere. Just stay there. Right there. Okay. Y'all move down a little bit. So, JR is what we call a true believer. Why? Woo! Because I don't believe what I say I believe. I only believe what I do. So, and one of the reasons, by the way, you don't have confidence, because you've been telling yourself you believe things that you've not been acting on your whole life. And so you know you're, you're faking it. And since you know you're faking it, you don't trust yourself. Because doesn't the word com confidence mean confide anyway? And doesn't confide mean trust? So the reason you don't have confidence is because you don't trust yourself, because you've lied to yourself so many times in the past that you can't believe a word you say. Wow. 
Your Landra and Rebecca and Neil and Sarah and Marvin, how many of you believe that other people love to pay you? <laughs> and Marvin with Bruce Lee-like reflexes. <laughs> okay. Go, go, go. <laughs> exactly. Stand over there with JR. Okay. So I want y'all to move down. Move down. So I'm, I'm, by the way, I can stand up here and run my mouth and talk about belief all. <laughs> Calm down. I believe it. She's all, I believe it. She's a, Okay, okay, I, I believe you believe it. Just hold steady in a second. I'm like, I turn around like, what, what? You ninja up on me so fast. You go, girl. Okay. I, I can stand, I can stand up here and talk to you about belief all I want to. But how many of you can see it in a totally different light now? Yes? How many of you believe that other people love to face? <laughs> she got the big piece. So the $20 bill got ripped and I lost a finger. Okay, stand over there, Sarah. How many of you believe that other people, of the two of you that are left, no, oh, you're welcome. Stand over there with the rest. How many of you believe? And Neil. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. Who got the $100 bill? Okay, I think you are in the same order. So just slide this way. So here's what I'm showing you. There's like, there's so many business lessons that can be learned in this illustration I just did. Okay, first of all, I don't believe what I say I believe, I only believe what I do. People, we've heard actions speak louder than words, but here's the reality, actions really speak. Words are just, words are, most of the time in most people's lives, words are just pontification. And here's what you have to understand. Okay, let me ask you a question. How many of you can make a hamburger? You know how to cook a hamburger? Yeah. How many of y'all can cook a better hamburger than McDonald's? Okay, let me help you understand something if you don't have your hand raised. If you can draw a hamburger on a piece of paper with a crayon, <laughs> You can make a better hamburger than McDonald's. How many of y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, okay. So, 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 but who sells more hamburgers than anybody else in the world? McDonald's. Oh, so you mean there's something more important than being the best in business. What is that? Being the first in business. It's called first mover advantage. Now, you, you, your, your, your quality has to be good enough for people to come back again, right? But... If the iPhone was perfect in 2007, we wouldn't be up to version 10. It's called engineered obsolescence. That means they engineer in things that are going to be obsolete very soon so that you'll buy the next iteration. And so in life and in business, you've got to move first because he got, you got what, $100 bill? Hold, yeah, hold your money up. Okay, everybody hold your money up. He got a $100 bill, which is twice as much as the person who moved second. It's not because he's better, it's just because he was first. He got five times as much, 4.9 4 times as much as the person who moved third, 10 times as much as the person who moved fourth, 20 times as much as the person who moved fifth, and um, 100 times as much as the person who moved um, sixth, but everybody who moved got something. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down, say yes? yes? And so when it comes to business, you have to take, if you are gonna create wealth, you've gotta take the fastest path to cash. You, but here's why you don't. Because I don't want to follow a get-rich-quick scheme. It's so amazing that we've been programmed that there's something wrong with getting rich quick, but nobody told us there's anything wrong with staying broke for the rest of your life. I'm telling you, the get-rich-quick scheme is way better than the stay broke for the rest of your life scheme. <laughs> the other thing that I learned is because everybody that moved get something, got something, when I have an opportunity to make my life better, I have to have a sense of urgency. Like, you guys are putting off building your funnels. You're putting off making your, creating your offer. And now, yeah, I'm going to get around to it. I'm going to do it in 2020. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it next month. Oh, yeah. How many of y'all know? Did anybody, anybody here know Eileen Wilder? Okay, she's one of my students, right? So Eileen wanted to, and she doesn't mind me sharing this with people because I already asked her for permission. She wanted to buy one of my really high-end coaching programs from me, really high-end. Like, it's a small house or a big car, whichever the case may be. Okay, anyway. So she's like, Myron, I don't have the money. What should I do? Like, what should I do? I thought I was going to be able to get it from here. I thought I was going to be able to get it from there. I wasn't. I said, here's what you do. You make more offers. What does that mean? Take the number of offers you do in the next year. Do that in many offers in the next month. Take the number of offers you do in the next month. Do that many offers in the next week. Take the number of offers you do in the next week. Do that number of offers every day for the next 30 days and you will have the money. She called me in a week and said, I have the money. It's called make more offers. Okay. So, but you've got to have a sense of urgency and you've got to act now. When? Now. 
Oh, that's so low in it now. You gotta act when? Now. now. You gotta act now. When you've got an opportunity to make your life better, a lot better, and it's only gonna take a little bit of time and cost a little bit of money, by comparison, you must act now. now. Give these folks a hand for acting now, thank you. Y'all can go back to your seats, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so, here's the other problem though. Some people think that they can't succeed because they don't have money. So, I have gone to, like, my life changed at a conference in 1997 that was in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I lived in Pennsylvania at the time. In this conference, I was with a network marketing company. They were having this thing called Leadership School in 1997 in Fort Lauderdale. And I had enough money to get there to the conference, but I didn't have enough money for a ticket. This is only 1997. That was not that long ago. I didn't have enough money for a ticket to get in. I didn't have enough money for a hotel room. God is my witness. I am not exaggerating. I did not have enough money to get back home. But I said, I'm going. Why? Because I learned a long time ago, when I make up my mind to do something, circumstances align themselves in my favor. When I say I can't, my mind stops looking for the answer. When I say, how can I? My mind keeps searching until it finds the way. I want to find somebody in here who really, honest to goodness, does not have $20. Like, honest to goodness. Anybody in here that doesn't have $20? You don't have $20. Okay, I want you to come up here. That's your perfect, perfect example. How old are you, by the way? 13. And what is your name? Isaiah. Isaiah, come on up here with me, bro. Now, I'm going to show you. Isaiah's going to help me show you. Come on over here, Isaiah. How old? You're 14? 13. 13. Hey, Isaiah. Myron Golden, good to meet you. Good to meet you, too. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do a business deal with Isaiah. Okay. But you don't have $20, right? Nope. Okay. So, I want a business person who understands business. I'm going to sell you, I'm going to sell you this $100 bill for $20. Now, he doesn't have $20. But here's what I'm going to do. I want somebody who has $20. Wait a minute, don't, before you, you, you have to follow my rules or you can't play the game. I want somebody who has $20 to loan him $20, but I want you to charge him 100% interest on the money. If you're not willing to do that, don't, I'm, I'm, you gotta be, you're willing to do it? Come on up here, Sarah. Sarah's got $20, so she, it's okay. So here's what's gonna happen. So, so Isaiah, here's what I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna do. Okay. She's gonna loan you $20 but you're gonna to have to pay her back $40. Okay. But I'm gonna pay you, I'm gonna sell you this $100 bill for $20. Yep. Are you okay with that deal? Yep. You like that deal? Yep. Yeah, shake on it. Okay, so you give me the 20, 19 and a half, okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna give you the 100. Now you find some change for her, you pay her $40, yep. okay? Yep. Give it up for Isaiah and for Sarah, y'all. <laughs> what did I just do? I just showed you that most people don't understand debt. Because most people think that good debt is debt with a low interest rate. Good debt is debt that makes you profits. I'm gonna tell you something, I'm rich and I borrow money. You know why I borrow money? Because I can use the bank's money cheaper than I can use my own. <laughs> just because I can pay cash for a car doesn't mean I should pay cash for a car. Just because I can pay cash for a house doesn't mean I should pay cash for a house. Because if the bank will loan me money cheaper than I, if, okay, let me, let me help you understand. If you have a funnel and you put a dollar in and you get $2 out, which means if you put $100,000 in, you get $200,000 out, why would you take $100,000 out of your operating capital to buy a stupid car when the bank will loan you the $100,000 and you can let that $100,000 turn into $200,000, the $200,000 into $400,000, the 400 into 800. The reason people don't create wealth is because they're financially illiterate. Most people don't even realize that the banks we deal with are fiat banks. Like there is a system where you can become your own bank. Does anybody in here have a mortgage on your house? Would anybody like to pay off your house in the next five to seven years yeah. and have access to all of the money that you desire for building your business over that same seven year time period? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna tell it to you real quickly, but what's gonna happen in a little bit later on today, Stephen's gonna make an offer. You should take advantage of that offer because it's gonna be epic, number one. Number two, because I'm in it. <laughs> and one of the things that I'm gonna do for the people who take advantage of that offer, I'm gonna teach you this specifically, but I'm gonna tell you what it is really quickly before I bring Steve back up. 
If you own a house, you should never again in your life buy a house on a mortgage. Always buy your house on a home equity line of credit, especially if you're an entrepreneur. Pay yourself a high salary. Deposit your entire check into your mortgage because a home equity line of credit gives you the ability to write checks off of it. The interest rate on a home equity line of credit will be higher than the interest rate on a mortgage. But because you're depositing your entire income into the home equity line of credit, it's like you're getting, you're getting interest on your checking account. I'm explaining it really fast. And it's, whenever you need money, all you got to do is write a check. So you pay your bills out of, you deposit your entire check into the home, line, home equity line of credit. You pay your bills out of the home equity line of credit. You end up paying off your mortgage in five to seven years, and you have access to all the cash that's in your house, and you become your own bank. And let's say you've got an $800,000 house, and you, you, you have a $400,000 home equity line of credit. You pay your mortgage off early. You've got access to $400,000 to go and buy Real estate, invest in apartments, invest in this, buy stocks, whatever the thing, invest in your business, invest in somebody else's business, because you were smart with your money and you didn't do the traditional thing just because that's what everybody else does. Isaiah is 13 years old. He borrowed money from a loan shark. I didn't know Sarah was a loan shark when I brought her up here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he borrowed money from a loan shark who charged him 100% interest. But guess what? Even when he paid her back and paid the interest, he had $60 left over. The interest rate's not the important thing. You know what the important thing is? How much profit can I make? I know I'm done, and I'm, I'm about to bring Steve up, but I gotta tell you this one quick story really quick. It's gonna take me like less than two minutes. In the Bible, there's this story about a woman who has two sons. Her husband dies. She comes to the prophet and says, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that my servant did, thy servant did fear the Lord. And he said unto her, what shall I do for thee? What do you want me to do about it? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? She said, thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. The first two words that came out of his mouth as instruction were these, go borrow. Go borrow empty vessels from thy neighbors. Empty vessels borrow, not a few. He said, go in debt to create wealth to sustain your family. The person who, create, bought, who owns this hotel, they did not buy it out of their checking account. They went into debt to buy it. 